In this episode of EFT Tapping Junction, you'll be joining an online seminar recorded earlier about positive EFT, power posing, and the use of positive emotional anchors. This seminar was shared with members of an energy healing meetup group I started and facilitated for 11 years. In this seminar, you're going to discover how to apply positive EFT, including all of the tapping points, how to use an innovative stress assessment scale called the SU scale, which is short for Subjective Units of Experience. You'll learn why it's better than the traditional SUD scale, SUDs being short for Subjective Units of Distress. You'll learn how to incorporate a technique called power posing with positive EFT to ramp up your positive energy flow. You'll discover how to access positive resource states anytime you like using a technique from NLP, short for Neuro Linguistic Programming. That technique is called anchoring. All of this and so much more are straight ahead. A couple of important items before you and I join the seminar. First, this episode is loaded with information and techniques because you'll likely discover new information and techniques you may not have heard about before. I've prepared a written illustrated guide that explains the key items in this seminar. These include one, how to use the subjective units of experience or SU scale for a more meaningful assessment of your stress level compared to the SUD scale or subjective units of distress. Secondly, an illustration of the tapping points used in the heart and soul protocol. Third, how to apply power posing and why it is such a powerful tool to enhance emotional well-being. And finally, how to create emotional resource anchors and why they are so useful. This guide is yours for the asking. Simply create an email with the subject line reading Positive EFT and Beyond. Leave the body blank and send that email to me at cartermethod at gmail.com. Regarding this EFT Tapping Junction podcast, I invite you to subscribe or follow for free where you get your podcasts. That way, you will never miss an episode. You can listen to previous episodes, subscribe or follow, and learn about my company, Stress Solutions LLC, by visiting us at eft-md.com. That's eft-md.com. Finally, if you have questions about this, or any other episode, or you would like to contact me for any reason, I would love to hear from you. Email me at cartermethod at gmail.com, cartermethod at gmail.com. With no further delay, let's join the seminar right now. What will we be covering? First of all, we're going to talk about what is EFT emotional freedom techniques. We're going to talk about what is positive EFT and how positive EFT differs from classic EFT. We're going to talk about how we measure stress. We'll talk about two different methods of doing that, the SU scale, which is the preferred method, and the more um, ancient scale of SUDS or subjective unit of distress. We will cover all of the meridian tapping points for positive EFT. We're going to experience something called power posing. This is a beautiful addition to any healing technique that you may use. It's really, really useful, and there's a fair amount of good science behind the effectiveness of power posing. We'll talk about anchoring. How do you take all of those positive good feelings that you created with positive EFT, with power posing, how do you anchor or associate those feelings into your neurology so that you can bring them back up at any time that you choose? 
And for those who would like to go farther, we've got some next steps for you and some uh, resource information. First of all, what is emotional freedom techniques? It is a tapping protocol for emotional and physical issues, and it uses the meridian points, much as acupuncture or acupressure uses meridian points. EFT does as well. EFT was developed by Gary Craig in the 1990s, thanks to Gary's promotional work and the promotional work of many others. It is used by millions and millions of people around the world. EFT comes from thought field therapy, a process that was originally developed by a psychotherapist named Roger Callahan in the 1980s. Both Thought field therapy and classic EFT are aligned with the medical model, which focuses on the negatives. What's wrong? What is the root cause? What needs to be fixed? As you'll see, we have a little different orientation in positive EFT. What is positive EFT? Its roots go back to 2013 to 2014. It was developed by Dr. Sylvia Hartman. Sylvia wanted to create a system that focused on the positives, much as positive psychology differs from the vast majority of psychological approaches in that it focuses on positive experiences, resource states, as opposed to trying to identify a root cause or get, quote, at the source of the problem. Now, there are some assumptions in positive EFT. Some of these are shared by classic EFT as well. First of all, negative feelings, emotions, and such are created by disruptions in the energy system. That's also an assumption, a working hypothesis in EFT as well. In positive EFT, disruptions are looked at as blocks to free flowing energy. We want to flow energy. And we want to flow particular forms of energy that make us feel good or create a feel good sensation in the body. Tapping in positive energy forms dissolves the blocks and opens the system to free flowing energy. The freer the energy or the freer the flow, the better you feel. Conversely, if we're blocked, if the energy is sluggish or can't flow at all, we feel terrible. Stress, high stress, low energy flow, high energy flow, low stress. Very simple, very powerful, and a very effective way to increase the sense of feeling good. How do we do that? By tapping in positive energy forms. Rather than look for what's wrong, in positive EFT, we choose what's right to flow through our system. In many cases, there is no need and often there's no way to identify the root cause of a particular issue. The root cause can simply be life. So rather than go hunting in the muck, in the mud, the muck, and trying to go into the depths of memories, beliefs, emotions, what we do is simply choose to feel good by choosing a positive energy form and tapping that through our system. You focus on choosing how you want to feel, how you want to be, how you want to perform here and now and ongoing, rather than what is causing or what caused the original issue. We begin by identifying our stress level. The classic way of doing that is what's called subjective unit of distress. That scale is zero, meaning I feel nothing at all, to 10. 10 is the worst possible state you could be in, the the highest level of pain you could imagine. And medical doctors, vast majority of psychiatrists and psychologists will use this scale to get a beginning level of your stress or your felt sense of anxiety, whatever that is. You'll notice on the SUD scale, There's no way to measure feeling good. It's all negative. How bad do you feel? Either I feel no pain or I'm just so in pain 
I can barely stand to live. Rather than use the SUD scale, I would recommend using the SU scale or the subjective units of experience. With the SU scale, we have minus 10 to plus 10. Minus 10 is the maximum pain, the maximum distress you could imagine. Plus 10 is you are dancing on the ceiling. You just could not feel any better. For every issue, for every mood, for every problem memory, for every limiting belief, we are somewhere on that SU scale. If it's a problem emotion, a problem memory, then it's going to be in the negatives. But if it's a feel good memory or a feel good emotion, we're going to be in the positives on the right side. The idea with positive EFT is we want to move our felt sense over to the right into positive territory. And that's exactly what we do with positive EFT. To do that, we have to choose the right positive energy form. We start by identifying, and if you can, labeling the problem emotion. For example, I'm feeling anxious, or I'm so frustrated or angry. If you can name the feeling, great. If you can't, simply identify it as that feeling. Notice where in your body you're experiencing that sensation of anger, whatever that is for you, whatever that problem emotion or that negative emotion is. Then you rate it on your SU scale. You literally ask the subconscious, minus 10 to plus 10, where am I? on that scale with this issue. And let's say I'm feeling anxious. Perhaps I'm getting ready to deliver a presentation and I'm feeling anxious about it. I'm almost to a point that I've labeled that as anxiety. So I ask the subconscious on that SU scale, where am I? And then I shut up and the subconscious will answer up, you're a negative four. Now I choose the energy form that is the antidote or one form, it could be many, but I begin with one form that is the antidote to what I'm experiencing in this moment. So if I was feeling anxious, antidotes could be calm, peaceful, gentle. I choose to feel calm energy flowing through my energy system. You can choose energy forms also to simply feel good. You may feel great, but you can feel greater. You can choose a positive energy form to even feel more confident, more powerful, more joyful. I have a list of 88 positive energy forms that can jumpstart, and you can choose from that list, or you can certainly let the subconscious ask the subconscious, what do I need in this moment, here and now, to feel better? And then shut up wait for the answer. You may not have any idea. It may be a surprise to you and likely will be. And that's that's a beautiful thing. But if you'd like the jumpstart list of energy forms, simply email me at cartermethod at gmail.com and request the list. What I do is uh, touch the list and let my fingers just kind of scan through and ask the subconscious, how do I want to feel right now? My touch lands on serenity. I want to feel serene, calm, relaxed. It could be transformation. I want transformational experiences, tenderness. Whatever that is, we can use the list to jumpstart by finding an antidote to a problem, or we can use it to simply choose an energy form and just feel absolutely marvelous, feel good, feel confident. Once you have the beginning SUD, uh, SU scale, rather, SU stress level, and you've identified your positive energy form, we're going to then apply what's called the heart and soul or a tapping protocol to flow that energy, that positive energy form that you've chosen, flow that through your system. You can use any tapping protocol you like. If you're familiar with classic EFT, great. Use that. We're going to use the heart and soul protocol here. But remember, you can use any protocol that you like. Let's begin by placing your hands over your heart, one on top of the other. 
can be the left hand on top of the right or the right hand on top of the left. Feel that connection. Feel your hands. Tune in to the felt sense of it. Breathe in three deep breaths and say in mind or out loud, I choose to flow your positive energy form, and let's say it's peace or peacefulness. I choose to bring through my system the felt sense, the energy of peace. Breathe that in. Breathe in that sense of peace. Feel that energy all around you. Breathe it in. And as you exhale, breathe out any sense of stress. And now take the dominant hand, place it on the crown, and begin to tap with the index finger very mindfully, not fast. Just tap five to eight mindful taps. Hold the position. Breathe in. Say in mind, I am choosing to breathe in the energy for this demonstration. It will be peace. I choose to breathe in peace and flow it through my whole energy system. And that's how we begin. Now, our tapping points, as I said, we start at the crown. We tap there. We then tap on the third eye. This is a magic place because you can really feel the sensation when you're tapping in the middle of the forehead. Touch, release, touch, release, just as if it's a little electrical charge. Hold the position. I choose to bring through the energy of peace. Move to the eyebrow, repeat that process, breathing in the energy of peace, side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, under the lower lip, and then the collarbone point, you find that by going to the top of the sternum, there's a little notch there. You go down an inch and over an inch, and you find that little indentation. That is your collarbone point. But it's probably easier to just take the fingertips of one hand or even both hands and just tap all across that sternum and even up and down. Lots of meridian uh, points there, acupressure points, and that just feels really, really good. Take a deep breath, release, and now, if time permits, you can tap your finger points. The place of your tapping on each of the fingers and the thumb, if you think about holding your hand out to shake hands and you look down at your hand, you're looking at the various places that you want to tap, and they're at the beginning of the nail, not at the tip of the finger or the thumb, but at the beginning of the nail, but on the side of each finger. You tap the thumb, again hold, breathe in, the chosen energy form, release, drop the shoulders, let go of any tension, move to the index finger, tap there, five to eight times, hold, breathe in the energy of peace. Release all tension. The middle finger, tap the ring finger. And yes, for those who are EFTers, I'm well aware that the triple warmer is actually, the beginning of the triple warmer is actually on the opposite side, the underside of that finger. Doesn't matter, tap the top part of the finger anyway. Move to the tiny finger. This is the heart meridian. So breathe into the heart. I choose to breathe in positive energy, the energy form of peace. And it lights up my heart, and I let that light flow from the heart all the way through my body, flowing the energy of peace to every cell in my body. Breathe it in, flow, release. Drop the shoulders, release any areas of tension, smile. Tap the karate chop point, 
And the easiest way to make sure you get it is just to take two or three fingers and just tap the hand where the karate master breaks the boards. Finger points again, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, tiny finger, karate chop point. We finish by returning both hands over the heart, three comfortable, easy breaths. Ah, shake out. And then revisit that issue or your felt sense in the body. What is your Sioux scale? What is your Sioux scale rating? For most people, just one round will move that Sioux scale rating significantly higher. If you started at a deep negative, you may not be in the positives just yet. But if you started, for example, at a minus three, even a minus four, the chances are just one round through, you're at a zero or plus one, plus two. You now have the option of choosing another energy form to go even higher, or you can repeat another cycle of the energy form that you just used. That is your choice. What I recommend is trying two or three different energy forms until you move that flow of energy up into the five, six, seven, eight, nine range, feeling absolutely marvelous, feeling wonderful. Speaking of feeling wonderful, let's talk about power posing. Power posing is a wonderful addition to positive EFT. It is an evidence-based method. And you can create sky-high confidence and peak brain-body states with it. It's kind of almost common sense. We know physical or posture and physical stance reflects the internal state that we're experiencing. If you look at someone who their head's down, they're breathing very shallow, they're closed up, we immediately know that they're not feeling optimum. They're not feeling confident. They're feeling bad. They're feeling negative, dejected. Their posture, their physical stance tells us that's true. However, it turns out you can change your internal state by adopting a pose consistent with the internal state you're choosing. Courage is a great one. Confidence. When you feel confident, how do you stand? You stand up, upright. You're open. Your head is up. You can tell when someone is confident by the posture that they assume. We assume then a power pose. And for our example, we're going to use hands on hips, head up, chest open, feet slightly wider than shoulder width. And this is a great power pose. You simply hold it, feel the energy, hold that pose for about two minutes. Feel the confidence. Feel how good it feels to feel good. There was a bronze statue, or there is a bronze statue, that was put in across from the bull up in New York. This is a power pose statue that was created for the International Women's Day. It was only supposed to be on display in the Wall Street District for a few days. It's gotten so much recognition and positive press that the city has decided to leave it in place for at least a year, and my bet is it's going to be a permanent fixture. And you'll see that this fearless girl statue, she's standing with her hands on her hips, chest out, open, head up, looking at the bull, full frontal, facing that bull, ready to achieve, to be confident, to just take on the world. And that's a great icon, not only for women, but for all of us. Two minutes of power posing will create positive changes in the biochemical markers in your body. It will change your emotional state, and those changes can last for hours. Now, we've talked about creating positive feelings with positive EFT. We've talked about creating positive energy flows in the body with power posing. How can we anchor those in the neurology? 
This is a very, very cool technique that comes out of NLP. Anchoring is a process of associating an internal response with an external or internal trigger so that that response can be re-accessed. So how do we do that? Recall a positive memory consistent with the mind-body state you're choosing to experience. For example, confidence. Think of a time that you were just so confident. Maybe that was a presentation you made. Maybe it was a sporting event. You finished your half marathon. You just felt really, really good. And if there was a power pose associated with that, so much the better. Get in that power pose. Feel that energy. And you recall that positive energy or that positive memory. You make the memory big, bold, bright. If there's music or if there's sounds, increase the volume. Good. Go ahead and do that now. Now, as the sensations, feelings are nearing their peak, just simply bring the thumb and forefinger or first finger, index finger together, touch them together, really ramp up the imagery, the feeling, feel it. And as that feeling increases, intensifies, gets more powerful, you hold that touch just for two or three seconds. And then as the memory begins to fade, you're releasing it. You simply open the touch of the fingers and then you smile. Bring the feeling in or bring the memory to mind. Bring it in big, bold imagery. Touch the fingers together as they intense as the memory intensifies, and then let it go and breathe deeply and smile. Think of two or, or more other positive memories, times you just felt unstoppable, courageous, powerful, and you anchor those memories the same way. Take a minute or two and power pose. Feel that energy, and then just as you're feeling that power posing. The results of that power posing, anchor that. Index finger, thumb together, feel it, and as you then let it go, open it. Now, what you can do here, any time in the future that you want to feel confident, powerful, positive, you don't need to bring up the memories. You don't need to tap. You don't need to power pose. If you've anchored those sensations, the feelings that come with those experiences in your neurology, all you have to do is simply touch the index finger and the thumb together and wait, and you'll feel that energy flow in your body. You'll feel that sense of confidence, of power, and you'll feel good. You can use this going into a presentation, a meeting, a situation that you need confidence, you need power, you need to feel an, the empowerment that those memories, those power poses, those positive energy tapping, positive EFT experiences created earlier, reaccess those, simply bring the thumb and forefinger together, feel it, and you are ready to rock and roll. We've learned about positive EFT, we've learned about power posing, and we've learned about anchoring. Some additional resources for you if you'd like to learn more about the energy EFT, positive EFT. Go to energyeft.com. Good resource, lots of uh, information there. I recommend it highly. If you'd like to learn more about power posing, go to YouTube, just type in Amy Cuddy, Dr. Amy Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y, and Power Posing. And one of the results will be her 2012 presentation on Power Posing, and that is the second most watched TED Talk that's available on uh, YouTube. If you'd like to learn how to apply positive EFT to enhance your physical, your emotional well-being, help others, move from stress to success in every area of life, solve problems, enhance relationships. There's endless applications to positive EFT. To discover how you can receive training in positive EFT, email me at cartermethodgmail.com, cartermethod at gmail.com. Until our next visit, 
I wish for you and your loved ones blessings in abundance. Mm-hmm.